Do you ever leave your smartphone just sitting around? Do you lock that phone whenever you put it down? Is your password secure enough? Well, social networking safety educator Paul Davis has found that most people do not have secure smartphones. Some simple fixes to change that as well. So this is based a little bit on a survey that you did here in Calgary. Right. Okay, tell us what you found. So I surveyed 100 individuals at a mall, and I found out that 78 of them had passwords, and shockingly, 22% of them, 22 people, did not have a password. I, asked, I didn't think that was optional. Oh, it, it is optional. Okay. And I sit there and I look at them, almost stunned, thinking, how can you not have a password when you have so much personal data? You have more four major components of information on your device. Right. Emails, access to social networks, text messages, and pictures. Right. Why do you want that in the hands of a complete stranger? Yes. Now, of the 78, only 74 had, sorry, 74 had four-digit passwords. Only four of them had something longer than four digits. That's baffling as well because simplicity, four-digit passwords are completely useless. We need something stronger than four digits on all of our devices. Okay. At a minimum, baby steps, let's start off with seven. Mm -hmm. I would prefer a word, which means now when you swipe your device. You're typing in a word. The, yeah, the keypad disappears. Yes. And now a keyboard appears. Okay. So now the person who steals your device, because your device will be lost or stolen once in your lifetime, the person who steals it doesn't know if it's a combination of numbers, letters, symbols, a phrase. Ah. That's what you want. You want to take it to the next level? It's called double entry password authentication. Mm -hmm. Two passwords to get in. Okay. It could be a simple password to get in and then a complicated password to get in or getting a pin sent to you in order to get into it. I like to start off with baby steps. So if at minimum, we all leave today and we change our passwords and we make it at a minimum seven, seven digits. Seven digits. We're well on You're our ahead of the game. Yes. Okay. Because so common mistakes that people make are having too short of a password, having simplistic passwords, not having a password at all. Right. So you want that combination of multiple factors. Right. Okay. When I speak to individuals, students or businesses, I tell them, you are either going to leave my presentation a disciplined password user or a simple password user or a lazy password user. Lazy, no password. Simple, four digits. Discipline, you're going to invest time to thinking, okay, I'm going to make my handheld device where I keep every piece of important information on yes. a word. At a minimum, a phrase. Now that's security. So when the device is stolen, after 10 attempts, right. everything gets wiped off. And that's what you want. Yeah. So that the person doesn't have multiple attempts to get in and grab your data. Okay. Uh, now, in terms of uh, that, that password and, you know, that we do exist in a world with so many different passwords. So right. where do you keep all those passwords and how often should you change your passwords? If you work for corporations, a lot of them will mandate 30, 60, 90 days you change your passwords. Yes. If you have a strong password, and phrasing is the best form of password creation, okay. you can do it every six months. Okay. Storing your passwords. A lot of people use password keepers. They're good. Uh -huh. I don't promote them. What happens if your device gets lost, stolen, and you know how many people take their phones in the toilet with them? What happens if you flush it down the toilet? You're not <laughs> getting your passwords back. So a password strategy is write them all down in a book. That book does not leave your home. Right. It's in a very secure part of your home. And if you ever, have, as a failsafe, if you ever need to get those passwords, you know where to go and find them. Now, you don't put them, obviously, in a common area of the home where someone can grab them. You put them in a secure place. But a book will never get hacked. I mean, let's just be honest. No one's getting access to that book. Right. It's a failsafe. And that's how I back up all my passwords. So okay. I back up my passwords in a book. I have a secondary backup, which is on a flash drive. That flash drive is placed somewhere very, very secure. And you need a password to get into it. So that's how I protect myself. So if I have passwords that are currently on the notepad on my phone, I should erase those. 22% of Americans in a, in a recent survey stated they store their passwords in the notes section of their phone. Right. The first place criminals go to when they're looking for passwords, when they steal or find a phone, mm -hmm. is the notes section. Right. Delete the notes section. Sorry, delete the passwords in the notes section of your phone if you take your password strategy seriously. Yes. Don't put it on there. Don't put it in a Word file, an Excel file. Don't store it in the cloud. Don't store it in the notes section of your phone. Store it somewhere off-site. Like I said, a book. book works great. Do not store it on your device. Yes. Because basically, if the person gets into your device, mm -hmm. they now have access to your social networks. They'll have access to banking passwords. They'll right. have access to anything that's private because you needed simple access to those passwords. And I'm suggesting absolutely don't do that. Okay, great information as always. Thank you so much. We're going to post this on our website as well. And here are a handful of appearances. Along with our website, breakfasttelevision.ca is where you can check out more information. Uh, Paul, you are a wealth of knowledge and we love having you on the show. And I learned something new. I'm going to be erasing that from my notebook section during the next segment here on over to you, Craig. What's up next for you?